I'm going to tell you how to optimize the user experience of your product with funnels and user journeys. What is going on everybody? Welcome to another video. My name is Alex. If you're new to this channel and you want to learn about product management, business, finance, how to get into the top tech companies, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Also, smash the like button to help this video get to more people interested in building and in product management. We're going to talk about how to improve the user experience today. We're going to use a number of tools, funnels, user journeys. I'm going to walk you through some of my favorite methodologies. I'd love to hear what you think. Let me know if you have other ideas. If you think about improving user experience in different ways, let me know down in the comments. I respond to every comment. All right, let's get started. The first thing to keep in mind is that optimizing the user experience, you want to be partnering with other folks. Of course, if you're in a startup, you're doing everything by yourself. I understand you can't do that. But if you're in a bigger company or in the top tech companies, make sure you're partnering with user experience designer, user experience researchers, and other folks that can actually help you make meaningful progress. Don't think you have to address it all by yourself. Having said that, let's go to the first thing in the process. Number one is think about the user and the user experience. Have the user clearly in mind the problem that the user is trying to solve. Make sure you have that in mind. Have also in mind the vision for your product, for your company. Make sure you have all those pieces in mind as you begin in your journey to actually improve the user experience. Make sure you understand all of the actors that are involved, everything that's going on in the space, in your product space, you understand that so you can actually improve it. Next, when you're thinking about these users, think about specific groups of users that you can identify. This is an existing product, so you've got data and you can segment the different users into different groups that are relevant and meaningful and you can analyze together, bundled. And build user personas so that you understand what are the people in this group. Give them a user persona. By the way, if you're a new product manager, I have a video talking about the top tips for new product managers. You might find that helpful. Check it out and let me know what you think. Next, identify the specific use cases for each persona. So what are the ways that these users interact with your product right now? Identify all of them and write them down. It might be place an order, check on the status of an order, check on the status of a delivery, write a review, right? All of the things that a user can do with your product, you should write out and it should be specific for each user persona or segment of users. Next, plot out the user journey for each use case. What does it actually look like? And this is where we get into these user journeys, into these funnels. What does it actually look like? What does each step look like? What does the user do? Step one, log in. Step two, go to your cart. Step three, browse items, right? And you can get even more detailed with those journeys, right? Every step you can identify and have as a single item. Now, Make sure you're actually tracking all of these points with data. You've got data tracking the way that users interact with your product at these spots. So that if you've made your, your user journey in these 10 or 12 steps, make sure they're captured in events within your product so that you can get data back about how these segments of users are actually interacting with your product. How are they moving down this flow? And that brings us to funnels. Once you logged all of the events, events are when something happens, when a user does something in your app. So for instance, going into the shopping cart, browsing an item or multiple items or a category that might be an event and it gets fired stored in your product when something happens when you've got a large set of those events you can start to analyze how far different users went into those user journeys and that's what's called a funnel you can think of a funnel that starts out at the top with all of your users going into your product let's say it's an app they go into your app they launch the app so step one event one is they launch the app what happens next in this particular use case when a user maybe wants to place an order is browsing for something and then wants to place an order the funnel starts out with the user entering the app then browsing for an item selecting an item adding that item to cart selecting the preferences for shipping and then placing the order and the funnel you're tracking all of these events and what you're looking for are big drop-offs you're looking for drop-offs that are maybe more substantial than others what is happening between these steps at which step is a user likely to leave the product and not continue down the funnel because the ultimate goal usually and hopefully you have your actual goal for the product and the company already set up but the goal is to get the user down the funnel into the conversions at the end is a conversion either they buy something or they come back to buy something else or they make a referral or whatever it is that's your conversion that's your success metric and you're trying to get as many users as possible down in the funnel so next once you've identified these big drop-offs these areas where users are not proceeding to the next step in the funnel, try to create hypothesis. Why might that be? Put yourself in the shoes of the user in that user segment, going through that user journey in that funnel. Why did they stop at this point? 
What did they see? What did they interact with? What happened before? Start to formulate hypotheses, hopefully with your broader cross-functional group, engineers, user researchers, UX designers, etc. What could have happened at this point or prior that made this user drop off at this point in the funnel? You can track when users are leaving, when users maybe are making duplicative actions. They're repeating the same action over and over, meaning they're not getting what they want. What other markers can you see that users are not proceeding down the funnel? Maybe they're going backwards. What does it mean? When a use case should end with a conversion, but it actually ends up going back. Is that a specific use case or why could that have happened? Next, you formulated some hypothesis about what could have been the reason for the drop off in these particular spots. Next, you're going to do a B test. So you're going to instrument a potential solution that could, in your opinion, influence this group of users at this stage in the funnel and get them to proceed further down the funnel instead of churning, meaning instead of leaving your product. And the reason why you want that in a B test is because you want to make sure that you're still tracking what happened to the users where no changes were made a in this case and what happened to the users where you've made the changes and you're now routing them to a different action that's your b and you want to compare a and b group and you want to do it in a way where you can be confident that if you did have an influence on this b group and they did go deeper down in the funnel you want to make sure that that's statistically significant and you know that that's actually the case and it's not just a fluke now be careful that you don't try to influence the same variable through multiple ways through multiple experiments try to do one thing at a time especially at the beginning for instance you've changed the sign up flow. Now users need to only fill out two fields instead of six. Watch what happens. Are they going deeper down the funnel? If yes, and the AB test confirms it, then you've made an improvement in the user experience. What happens next? Are they picking too many items? Are we taking too long to get them to the checkout page? Or if it's a different product entirely, are we not engaging them quickly enough? What, what is actually happening? What can we improve? So you're going to put together multiple iterations. And as you go, you're going to make the experience a little bit better each time you make an update. Sometimes you'll go backwards because some of the AB tests will show that you actually have negative movement. So you've made the metrics you need move backwards because not all of your hypotheses will be right. That's okay. But as long as in aggregate, you keep moving forward and you keep getting more and more users to move deeper and deeper down the funnel. By the way, if you want to know how to improve a product, you can check out this video that I made specifically about that. Check it out and let me know what you think. Of course, that's just one way of optimizing the user experience. We'll talk about more in other videos. Hopefully you enjoyed this video though, so make sure to hit the like button if you want to see more content like this in the future and subscribe if you haven't already. I see 55% of you as of the recording of this video are not subscribed or watching, but not subscribed. If you like this video, I have a ton more videos here, there, a little bit here maybe, product management, business. Hopefully you find those valuable. And if you do, make sure you subscribe. And of course, leave me a comment with your questions, suggestions, or ideas for new videos. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.